For me, like Burfield is the ultimate challenge. Like, it's like 96 acres, 120 or so fish, like, and it's like split into two different lakes almost. Like there's a big open expanse of, of water one end, and then like you've got 26 islands on the whole lake, and it's all bays and nuts and crannies down the other end. I'd always planned to come to Burfield eventually after I was doing what I was doing. It's like I always sort of grew up looking at the likes of Mary, Heather. Black Mirror, them sort of fish, and the Burfield Common was one of them, so I sort of saw it as like the last of the Mohicans, almost, you know, the last one that you could go at, and, and it was the only one that was alive, you know, all, all the others had sort of fade, faded away, so it was definitely there, and it was definitely going to do it, so I put my name on the waiting list, I was over at Lynch doing my thing on Stone Acres, and it just so happened, the spring that I got my ticket, I caught um, my target fish over at Lynch Hill, so it, it worked out perfect. Um, I started about, I think it was about May the 2nd last year, 2016, when I got my first first um, session in. And, and straight away I knew I, I knew it was going to be a daunting place. I remember as a kid when I was about 15, you know, I had the map on, on my wall, you know, a, 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 the, the bird's eye view. Yeah, I think it might have been like Nigel's map or something like that. So I knew it was going to be a mission, but it suited me down on the ground, the trees and all that, you know, in the bays and the, between the islands. So, I, I mean, and it takes like sort of probably four or five hours to walk if you're going to do a good lap climbing a few trees and that, you know, so it's not for the faint heart, it's a real mission. Like, it's all overgrown and brambles everywhere. Passionate ate for brambles now after that place, like, so, yeah, I got, I got stuck right in. I remember I caught my first fish straight away, like, second session in, and I'm, I remember thinking, what are you doing? Like, I'd seen this fish feeding, I thought I'm going to have a go, and then, I remember thinking that, that I've got to try and single this one out. This is the Burfield Common, that's the one I'm here for. I don't want any others. So from that moment on, it was all guns blazing for her. I spent a lot of time sort of baiting spots in the edge that I could see from the trees, lapping and lapping. And just I, and there'd be moments where I'd see big fish, you know, 40 pound fish, and uh, feeding on my spots and think that could be an easy bite, but it could have took uh, like one, two days to catch that fish. So I just sort of, I'd leave them to it because the thought was she could be just around the corner waiting for me and I did get a lot of sightings of her, real good sightings, I had a, a good chance with her last, last uh, season that I won't go into like but I, it ended up failing. <laughs> but yeah I had, I had a few good chances with her, good sightings, I'd seen a show in certain areas and um, so I felt like I was close to her and not like, I don't want to sort of blow my, my, my own trumpet as such but usually the fish that I see are the ones that I catch, it sort of speaks for itself. Um, so yeah, I had a real good good few chances at her, but it just wanted to be, and my plan was for, for, for this year was to get down and sort of fish for what I saw um, in the spring, fish in the open expanse of water seems to be where they wake up in the deeper water, and then wait for the, the sort of hot hot days to, for them to get down the other end into the like the bays and, and between the islands and things, try and single her out that way. Um, but like, like I said, I'd seen her quite a few times and she'd always be with these certain fish. She wasn't a pack fish, you know, she was always sort of on her own or with one or two other fish. So I, I sort of knew she was a loner, so I almost, like when I was fishing sort of open water and I hadn't sort of seen her, I always felt most confident when I saw no fish showing on me. You know, for that bite, it was always going to be a nothing showing, random out of the blue. That's how I thought it was going to happen if I was fishing that sort of style. Uh, so I'd booked four weeks off work, sort of mid-weeks. Uh, so I had four mid-week sessions on the bounce. And yeah, I'd, I'd been over at the big one show in Farnborough and sort of left there on the Sunday. It was a real hot day, 26 degrees, baking. And I, 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 I spoke to the lads there and said, well, right, I'm going to have to go. I got to about one o'clock. I thought, I've got to go, got to get in my swim, where I want to be, and uh, go for a walk round. Because like, like I said, you do get up in the surface to get down the bays. So I have got down, parked in the swim called a compound swim. And it sort of commands a good open water, sort of deep, uh, it's like six foot in that sort of bay, uh, fishing between two islands, uh, like an island off to your left and at about 150 yards, and then right over in the distance, sort of 300 yards. So you're almost in a bay between two islands. 
So uh, yeah, I've dropped my me, dropped me van straight in there, I've gone for a walk around. I see a few fish um, down the other end, but it wasn't a lot to go on. I thought, no, let's stick to the plan. So I got in the swim, got a couple of rods just on the, on the left hand point of the island, just past it, just, uh, that shelf is just past the tip of the island. Um, it, it drops down to about 16 foot, like I say, and it, it was going down with a real thump, you know, you could feel it go down. And uh, yeah, so I've dropped two, two out there and then one out long to the right. And so the next day I've got up, and I see a few fish show me, probably sort of six in the zone. And I thought that, that that's a good sign because I'm almost behind the island here, just fishing to the tip of it. So I'd imagine that they were showing all the way down the other side of the island to see six was a good sort of shout. But like I said before, it didn't really feel like common sort of land. But yeah, I had, I had one take in the morning. Uh, I didn't have connection with it for that long. It was about 30 seconds. Um, it taught me a cruel lesson, really. Um, I could feel it grating, and then all of a sudden it, it pinged off. And I thought, what's going on? And wound it in, and uh, the, the rig had just totally gone. And I thought, is that is that me, me grinning not gone? I thought, surely not. And I had a, after closer inspection, I could see a big bear of metal on the swivel. So I thought, ah, it's cut me off on that ledge. So straight away, I thought, I've got to change here. You know, I've gone from 20 pound, like semi stiff material, to 25 pound, souped it up. And uh, yeah, I've just left that rod out. And then later on that afternoon, about half 12, the other rod on that left-hand spot's gone. Um, and I'm pointing this fish, and it's taking a bit of line. I'm thinking, this is a pretty good fish, like, and it's taking line, I'm gaining on it. And I could feel it grating over that shelf, um, and it's cut me off. And I'm thinking, right, I've got to sort something out here straight away. So um, I, I, only lost it, I only lost about six inches of line above it anyway. So I was happy that it was all safe, the lead would have gone. Um, yeah, so I thought I've got to sort something out here. So I've wound all the rods. Up. Obviously, I've got two in already. I've wound the other rod in. I've respilled respill them all up to braid, 20 pound sub braid, straight through, straight to like eight foot like core leaders, you know. So it's really it's souped up. It was almost like them two fish were almost a blessing in disguise. Although I lost them, they were a blessing in disguise to sort my tactics out. So then I've got the rods out, did exactly the same, two on that corner, one on, on the far island. And the, uh, the, yeah, same again, next morning woke up sort of three or four in the zone and uh, yeah, it, it, I just felt like it was going to happen and uh, yeah, lo and behold, about half eight in the morning I've had a take and straight away I knew that I was in good connection with it, that shelf weren't going to cause me a problem and what I did is I devised a plan that I was going to pick up the rod and there's like a scaffold at the side of the swim, a little bit of scaffolding that you can sort of run down, get the rod real high, 13 footers and you can combat that ledge. So I was getting, that's what I was doing and it went to plan and also then giving it a bit of left hand side so it guided it away from the point of the island into the open water and it went perfect, didn't take out the other rod, perfect, it come into the bay, landed it, it's a tw 24 pound, real, real nice fish. Um, did a few pictures, got it back and then yeah, later on that afternoon again, sort of 12 o'clock, it's a, not really a common bite time but spring, you know what they like, waking up can be any sort of time. So yeah, about half 12, another take. This felt like a better fish, taking a lot of line, hanging down deep. But again, done, got the left hand down on it, got it under control, everything was going well. And uh, yeah, got it in the net, and that was a real nice, like deep bodied, dark fish, 42 pound, 10 ounces. Real nice fish, and that was me sort of, I was buzzing. And you know, after it was such an up and down session, you know, from one end of the scale to the other, you know, I'd lost two. But it, like I say, I think that was a blessing, you know, that I'd lost them two in a way. And then it was all, almost like these next two on the next morning had, had taught me how to guide the fish in, you know, give me a bit of, like, how to, how to deal with them. So it was almost like everything was going to plan. And then, yeah, got it exactly the same, didn't change too much, which all I was doing is just, just my normal style of fishing, leg clip straight through. Um, to a little, little um, I was just fishing tiger nut up baits because the, the crayfish are really bad in here, so you can't get away with any sort of boilers and up bait just for a confidence thing. Um, just put in like 12 mil manila bottom baits, bit of crushed nut, crushed Brazil and tiger nut, just a handful, enough for a bite, you know, not overdoing it, spring. Uh, so yeah, that, that, they were the sort of tactics I was using. And yeah, I've got it all the same. Next morning, woke up and I didn't see nothing. All the fish had moved over into the outer bounds. There's about 35 acres that you can't fish and I could see them bouncing like this. And I just thought, right, they've moved over there. And my me, me brother even rung me about 10 o'clock. The sun was coming up, nice day. And he was like, you've seen them over there, haven't you? I was like, yeah. He said, what are you doing? I said, mate, these rods are staying in. Like, this is like now sort of common territory, maybe. Like, because like I say, I always felt that when they weren't showing on me, it was going to maybe be a, a time for her. So yeah. But, 
and, and that was the other thing as well, it's like, because it was warm, Burfield, you know, they do get in them bays and that, so a lot of people could have easily been tempted. Had I not learned that it was a sort of a loner fish last year, a lot of fish could have been tempted into, a lot of people could have been tempted into going down the other end and having a look for them, but no, I knew, like, and it's worth mentioning about the moon phase as well, it was a full moon. Um, the night before and the exchange was going to be 107 in the afternoon so I knew that and it, 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 I mean some people believe in it some people don't but there's, there's just too much in coincidence in the, in, in the carp industry uh, but yeah anyway back to the fi uh, back to the fishing like I say I see no 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 shows and I was sat there dug meals and I was just thinking yeah and it was about half 12 I remember I rung my mum I was on the phone to my mum and um, the left hand rod's gone, it's a way like, I've picked up into it, I could tell it was a smaller fish straight away, a bit of tap, 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 and I dealt with it, and luckily it didn't take the other rod out, because braid side by side, sort of, when I say side by side, sort of 12, 16 foot apart, but it can be quite savage, you know, so I guided it, got it around the other rod, perfect, and it came in, and uh, yeah, I put the net under it, as soon as I put the net under it, and looked, and I just thought, that is her mate, like, like I say, I see her a few times last year, I used to call it pointy face, but I know why now, because it's got a real twisted mouth, just a deformity, it's not mouth damage, it's just a deformity, and I looked at it, and I, I turned it on its side, and it's like real weary, you know, all battered scales, and like real old character fish, and it's an, one of the originals, you know, and I, I just thought, that's her mate, like, um, almost panic stations like where's the retainer you know just wanted to get her in the retainer quick get the net set back up um, and literally yeah done that jump back in, into the bed like i'm literally fishing right on my rods like because obviously fishing just past this point of the island you got to be on them and yeah the um i literally press call to my mum put it on speaker and as it's ringing that rod's gone the next one and that's on the spot and it's absolutely just smashed into the alarm and i've just picked it up and i've had to give it line i was fishing locked up but i had to give it line um, it'd have been a hook pull if not. And I've heard my mum answer on the phone, I'm like, ring Barry, I've got a fish, like, ring my brother, like, tell him I've got a fish, like, and um, this fish is just stripping line, stripping line. It must have took 60, 70, maybe even 80 yards on the first run, and straight away I'm thinking, um, I mean, I've seen videos of it that taken, you know, on the tape, like Dave Wayne had a video of it, and I've seen that, watched it a number of times, and just, oh, straight away I've got a mate in the retainer, I've got a savage tape, this could be her uh, potentially. But yeah, I've done the same, got the sort of left hand on it off the scaffold in and it's kiting out to the right and it's perfect, everything's going good, just take a line, it's gone into the deep water. And then all of a sudden, it's just gone from right to left at the speed of light and just gone straight round the back of the island and I'm like trying to gain line, gain line. It's almost slack lining me and it's just gone round and I'm just putting the pressure on, I can feel it coming through and coming through. Every, fishing on the braid you can feel everything and it's gone solid for like 30 seconds and I'm like no like what am I going to do like, and all of a sudden it's just coming through and coming through and I just kept it coming it must have been 50 yards around the back of there and there's so much snags around the back and uh, yeah it, it just like literally my line's going straight into the corner of an island into a bush I'm thinking this is this could be over and I've just kept pulling it and pulling it and it's just coming and as it's sort of come up that 16 foot shelf and hit the shallow water obviously she knew she was near, near on beat into the, the water that I wanted her she's just gone lipping, zipping sorry from left to right at the speed and like literally I was winding and winding it's almost like it had come off but I could see the line cutting through the water like cheese wire like, and it's going for the, the jetty down the right hand side it's, it's uh, mounted on scaffold so I knew where she was going I've just gained and gained and gained like that and just when it's probably got about two rod lengths off I've just give it full left hand down like so cringy like you'd think this is going to up pull but it was that or nothing, all or nothing, I had to do it and her tail's coming out, at this point I don't know it's her but I've got a good idea it could be and she's proper going for it but once she knew she couldn't get there it's just done the same again from right to left and I'm swap lining, swap lining and she come across the front of me tuck line and gone round the dot island on me left and it's round through the, like gone through two dot islands and I can see through the bushes and it's just rolling on the surface and as I've, as I've pulled her back round there's real shallow ground there and it's come over a hump and as she did that, I see her head and shoulder come out and I just knew it was her, like, from, I've seen her so many times in the water and the width of her and that little head, like, I just see it come out and that, that was sort of panic stations and, like, I knew that I was in co contact with it. Um, so I'm, I'm playing it, it was going on real savage runs. Um, one of my mates come in the back of the swim, Neil, he walked in, he said, oh, you, you got one, have you? And I said, mate, it's 100% her, uh, I've got the net, just be quiet, like, and give me his due. We just sat there in silence and I had a, probably another sort of 10 minutes with it after I knew it was it. And uh, yeah, it's just, it just circling around, going on savage runs, but what it was doing, it was sort of like taking line, about 60 yards, and then coming back towards me dead quick. 
and then it get so close in it and then it'd just go on another savage run like it almost knew I was in good connection with the braid, you know, like it could up pull me, so clever. Um, but yeah, and eventually it just went in, in the net, only just like the length of the thing, just got it in, sort of scooped it in and that's it, I just, I just went mental, like it just looked better. And she was big, like, I've got nothing else to compare her to, but she was massive, like, I flipped on the side and me and Neil were just going sort of mental, run my brother, he was like right down the bottom of the dog leg the other side and he run, by the time he got round here, he was rosy red and sweating like him. But yeah, so she's in the net and I just made obviously a few phone calls and that. We, 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 uh, I'm pretty glad, really. I mean, we did the little, we did the pictures of the uh, mate first, and uh, I didn't really get time to appreciate that one, you know, because I had the main prize waiting as well. So, but yeah, we did the, the little one first and slipped her back, and then we got the main prize out. And I'm, I'm so glad that we sort of did the pictures before we weighed her, you know, because we got her up on the scales, 62 pounds, eight ounces, like unbelievable, like. It's one of them things that you just, although you're putting that much time and effort in with this lake, you know, you almost think that it's not going to happen. So when it happens, like, it just it just blew me apart, mate. You know, it's just no other way of describing it. And yeah, I think that's the 11th captor of it. I'm the 11th captor of it sort of since the mid 90s. Um, so it's nice to be sort of part of the smallest club in carp fishing, you know. Sixty-two bang on. Oh, <laughs> 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 Sixty-one forty. She's one ounce under. One ounce under sixty-two.